terms of our schedule for today, uh, we're going to start off uh, talking about um, a leading and participant-oriented discussion. And so uh, obviously, I want this to be participant-oriented. So uh, I have some points that I want to make, but I also want to take your questions and comments during this session. Uh, we may run a little bit over, and we're going to uh, talk about the Professor Graham and Ms. McComber case, which is a really interesting case, I think, of interaction in the classroom. And you know, what do you think of the way Professor uh, McComber uh, uh, runs his classroom? Uh, and then in the afternoon, uh, remember I mentioned yesterday that uh, one thing that you can do uh, in terms of organizing a case-oriented curriculum is to uh, rotate lectures uh, with cases that illustrate the concepts in the lecture. So we're going to be doing that this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to start off with a lecture on behavior change. Uh, and then we're going to be doing a case which utilizes the concepts uh, from that lecture. Uh, so uh, the question that we'll be addressing in the case is uh, there are all these businesses in Medellin, Colombia that are in the informal sector, and the question is, you know, why are what are the barriers that they face to formalizing? Why don't they want to formalize? Uh, and uh, what are the kinds of strategies that governments can use to try to uh, get them to formalize? Again, uh, hopefully bringing alive some of the concepts that I'll be talking about in the lecture on behavior change. So, uh, any questions about? format or anything before we get started? OK, so uh, let's get going. We're talking about uh, leading a participant-oriented discussion. Uh, and uh, uh, these are the, the topics that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk, first of all, about the physical environment of the classroom, which I'm going to argue is very important. Uh, some classrooms are much better uh, at uh, running a participant-oriented discussion in terms of people being able to see each other and to interact better, about time management, about using the whiteboard or blackboard, uh, about limiting distractions from students. And you'll see I take a pretty authoritarian position uh, on uh, 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 that in, uh, in my classes. Uh, and then in terms of actually running the discussion, sort of starting questions, how you can promote student engagement, uh, uh, organize takeaway points, and uh, uh, and then some physical things about moving around in the classroom. OK, so let's start off <coughs> with the physical environment. Physical environment matters. Uh, that uh, you know, you're much better off if the students can see and hear and engage with each other if they are facing each other, not the, the classroom is not uh, uh, totally oriented around uh, the professor. You know, when the professor is standing behind the lectern and all the chairs are lined up so that they're facing the lectern, you know, that sends a very clear message about who's important here uh, and whose <laughs> views matter. And I am projecting everything important, and you are absorbing everything important that's coming from me. You know, when uh, there's a classroom like this one where the professor can go right up and talk to the students and say, well, you know, what do you mean by that? And say, well, you know, do a role play uh, with Yarina here. And, uh, you know, and they end up talking to each other. And in that sort of situation, you know, I may just stand off at the side and let the two of them talk, uh, it leads to a much different uh, kind of classroom uh, environment. So, so what does that mean? Uh, there, most universities don't have good, many good classrooms. So, you know, lobby to get the best classroom that you can, because it really is important uh, in terms of uh, uh, having a space that works. Uh, move the furniture around if you can. Uh, obviously, in a, th in a room like this. There's not a whole lot you can do. You know, the, everything is fixed. Uh, in this room, uh, the furniture is movable, and we've tried to create at least a somewhat uh, more user-friendly environment, although I think we would have done it a little differently if we'd thought through it a little more. Um, and uh, uh, again, move around the classroom to facilitate discussion. I'll be talking a little bit uh, more later about uh, specific kinds of things you can do. Uh, make sure that you've got the uh, kind of equipment that you need. Here we see uh, poor Mitt Romney trying to make some complicated uh, arguments on a very small whiteboard. Uh, it's very difficult to do case-based teaching 
uh, when you don't have a lot of space to write down uh, students' ideas. You know, you need to collect ideas from the class. You need to try to present them uh, in a structured way. And I'm going to be talking later about whiteboard plans and the way that, ways that you can structure them. Now, suppose you're in a classroom where they just don't have many whiteboards. Well, I have lined up as many as four or five flip charts in a row uh, you know, to get the whiteboard space that I need. You need to be creative, uh, but uh, flip charts are not an ideal substitute, but uh, if you can get enough of them and uh, be creative in the way you use it, that, that can get you around uh, some of the problems uh, from inadequate whiteboard space. Um, so time management. Uh, this is something most people don't think about explicitly, but I would argue it is really important for uh, a case-based class that you know you may have sort of five different points you want to make or you know three different topics. Uh, and what's the greatest fear that I at least have as an instructor, and I think probably many of you share, uh, which is, I'm going to run out of things to talk about, right? And so that the, the last 10 minutes of class is just going to be silence. <laughs> and that is so embarrassing. So as a result, we have a tendency to let things go you know, a little longer than they should so that we don't for sure run out of things to say. And of course, what does that mean? That means in the last 15 minutes of class, we don't have time to do all the things we wanted. All of those issues become really rushed. Uh, so uh, the idea of having an explicit written plan saying, I have a 75 uh, minute class and you know, I know, let's say that I want to have some introductory lecture material. Uh, I want to set up a case and then I want to discuss the case and there may be sort of four different blocks of things I want to discuss uh, within that case. And and I would have uh, summary and takeaways. Well, you should know in advance more or less how much time you want to devote to each of these. Obviously, you want to have some flexibility. You don't want to make it rigid. But uh, you should have uh, a general outline of how much of, let's say, there are five different blocks uh, I'm going to uh, uh, be discussing in this class and how much for each. And the reason you do that is oftentimes uh, you sit, you'll say, OK, I have these five different blocks. And then if you sit down and, and write them out, you say, OK, well, I've t it'll take 20 minutes for each of these five blocks. And oh, wait, I only have 75 minutes in this class, and that's 100 minutes. So you have to figure out. Where am I going to trim it uh, to fit all of those things? But unless you do it explicitly, you're not, uh, you know, you're not going to make those adjustments. So you I have two questions. First sure. of all, how, like, do you actually follow the timeline technically? Like, do you have alarm somewhere? So actually, it's showing you, OK, mm -hmm. you have Excel or something. <laughs> Uh, and the second, how actually do you make decision which part like is more important and it's better to take I don't know twenty five minutes or to right. have only ten right. minutes? Because still, do you have I don't know learning objectives with the priority? Yeah. So you know it should all be based on what your learning objectives are and and how complex you think the material is and uh, you know you can adjust it sort of five minutes each way. So this is actually what I do. I I have uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, so, you know, different uh, for different classes, I may start it at different times. But I have uh, how much time do I think it's going to take? Uh, you know, so what's the total elapsed time in the classroom? And then what's the end time? And it's actually this last column that's the most important thing because, you know, when you're juggling different things, you're trying to get points across. You're trying to remember the names of all the people who are talking in uh, what order. You're trying to write on the board, you know, to say, okay, I'm 35 minutes in the class. I started at nine o'clock. That means it's 9:35. You don't want to have to do that, right? You want to be able to just in a split second look and say, am I? On time, 
Am I running early? Am I running late? So the, the column that I look at is the end time. So uh, I, let's say I, I, when I'm teaching the Hyderabad uh, uh, water case, uh, I begin with a discussion of, well, how's this organization doing? You know, let's do a report card for this organization. I'll show that a little later. Uh, and so that's 15 minutes after five minutes of introduction. So I can just quickly glance at the time management sheet that I have uh, always up here on the, the podium and say, okay, it's now 9.23, I'm a little bit behind, but you know, it's not, uh, I'm not seriously behind. Okay? Yeah. So uh, anyway, the main thing that this does is it forces you to be realistic, right? Because you say, okay, I'm going to cover all these things. Uh, but just going through the exercise of the first column, uh, you know, you're going to see I have too much material here. Uh, I'm going to have to cut this material. So uh, that's uh, really worthwhile. So uh, this is one which is uh, uh, basically a uh, entirely case-oriented discussion. So no, nothing is going on here but uh, but teaching the case. But uh, DB stands for discussion block. So I have four different discussion blocks, and I've decided, you know, based in part on experience because uh, I've taught the case many times before, and also based on what my priorities are, uh, uh, how much time I'm going to allocate to, uh, to each one. And again, you know, if I'm off by a few minutes, then it's fine. If I'm off by 10 minutes or 15 minutes, uh, then I really, you know, I sort of got a problem. Uh, uh, okay. <coughs> uh, so this is another uh, kind of uh, uh, a time management plan for uh, a different kind of class here. Uh, what we're uh, doing is uh, I've got some lecture material, uh, concepts that I want to cover. Uh, there's a theoretically oriented reading and then a more brief discussion uh, of a case. And again, you know, I'm figuring here 15 minutes for the lecture, 15 minutes for discussion of the theoretical reading, 25 minutes for analysis of the case, and then uh, 15 minutes for uh, an action-oriented discussion of the case. You can see this is a really packed in timeline for uh, a 75-minute class, but at least I know that now, right? Having made out my time management plan, uh, that something's going to have to give, right? I'm not going to be able to go as much in depth uh, into uh, some things. Uh, and that suggests, well, you know, maybe I ought to cut my lecture. I ought to think, can I make, can I present this more briefly? Can I maybe do it online before uh, the class uh, begins and just post it so that I can use that classroom time for uh, an in-depth discussion of the material? Uh, another uh, time management plan for a uh, 75-minute work group session, and this is actually uh, sort of like the uh, uh, the session uh, that we're going to be doing the second session today when we talk about the Georgia wine case because we are going to be breaking up into groups uh, the uh, the time allocation is different because we have more time, but you know, we start off with instructions to groups, uh, then groups working on presentations, uh, and then a time allocated for presentations and an overall uh, discussion. So again, it uh, uh, breaks things down so that you uh, don't end up running out of time. Okay, so uh, some general lessons about time management. And again, any questions, thoughts on this? Uh, you know, it, uh, as I said, the, a major purpose of this is to make you be honest with yourself. Uh, if you have too much, you always, almost always have too much material. Uh, if you have too much material, cut the material to fit the time. Uh, there may be some t topics that you say, well, uh, you know, it'd be nice to explore this, but probably don't have time. So for that, you can kind of uh, hold it in reserve. Say, I need to cover these basic concepts, but uh, in part, to guard against that, I'm always afraid I'm going to end up with silence at the end of class. If you have a topic that you have in reserve, say, I don't absolutely have to cover this. It would be a nice extension. Uh, if you've got that in reserve, then you're not so worried about running out of uh, material and you can uh, you know, manage your time, I think, uh, much more effectively. And if, you know, if, if the analysis proceeds quickly and you know you, you get through more quickly, uh, then uh, uh, you can address those things. Okay, uh, what about 
whiteboard plans, okay? So uh, should you come to class beforehand uh, sort of knowing what the whiteboard is gonna look like at the end of class? Uh, how many people would say yes? How many people would say no? How many say yes? How many would say no? Okay, we're, we're kind of split, and then we got a lot of people who uh, uh, are reluctant to make uh, a, a firm decision. Uh, so I would suggest that you should at least have an idea of where you're going to go with your whiteboard plan. And people have different strategies on this. So uh, as you'll see uh, when we do the Medellin case, I am a, uh, a big explicit whiteboard plan. Uh, person uh, and uh, you know Frank is uh, more informal and again it, uh, there's no right way to do this it fits uh, uh, it has to fit your personality and also the, the material you're doing but you know having a whiteboard plan you know allows you to highlight figure out are there certain things you want to make sure that people get uh, and think about ways that you can highlight those uh, uh, in the uh, discussion uh, to make connections across different analytical points uh, you want to make, and also uh, sometimes students say things that are, you know, they kind of got the point, but uh, it's sort of off a little bit. If you have a, a whiteboard plan that maybe has different categories in it, you can kind of filter and reframe what the student does in a way that's more productive uh, for the case. So I'm going to show you just a few uh, uh, different uh, whiteboard plans uh, that I have used. Uh, so this is one uh, for a teaching case that we're not doing in this class. Uh, uh, it's a teaching case about a teaching situation where uh, there's a, uh, a Japanese student who's come to an American business school. Uh, and who is having horrible troubles adjusting and uh, feels that they're failing and uh, you know is considering dropping out of school uh, and so uh, what I do when I teach this case is I talk about well what are the student's strengths uh, and then what are the symptoms he is exhibiting uh, what are the sort of underlying problems uh, that are leading to those uh, symptoms? And then I say, okay, now we've got a list of strengths and we've got a list of problems here. So we then go over to what should be done? Uh, what should be done by the student? What should be done by the company that has sent him there? What should be done by the professor? Uh, what should be done by the university in order to make this, uh, uh, this kind of situation, which is a generic situation of foreign students who uh, feel overwhelmed by the lack of their English language uh, skills and are unfamiliar with the case method. Uh, so all of those uh, things then can be organized around the underlying problems that Tanaka, uh, Ko Tanaka uh, is facing and uh, different ways to kind of address it. And then the, the uh, you know, can lead to a nice discussion among the class about, well, who's re whose responsibility is this? You know, is it the student's responsibility? Uh, is it the university's responsibility? Should the professor be taking more uh, of a role? But uh, having it, framing it in this way allows you to uh, organize things around the particular problems uh, that, that Ko, uh, Tanaka uh, is uh, facing. So <coughs> uh, whiteboard plans can be uh, relatively simple. So I mentioned yesterday when I teach the uh, Hyderabad uh, Metropolitan Water Supply and Sewerage Board case, the first thing I, the way I start off class is with a report card. I say, well, here are some things that the, uh, uh, the water board should be doing well. Uh, some things having to do with its overall objectives like expanding geographic coverage, delivering high quality water, being financially self-sufficient, uh, and then some more specific ongoing tasks. And I just have students write grades or decide